Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here, I hope you're doing great. Got a story out of uh, Globus.com and it's very, very important. It's about CLO issuance and how it is down. If you don't know what a CLO is, it stands for Collateralized Loan Obligation and they're referring to the commercial real estate uh, industry. And we're gonna get into that story. I just did a video on my other channel, Real Estate Ninja. I'll put a link to it in the pinned comment section. It's really important to go check out because it is insane, the staggering numbers of commercial real estate that has to get refied this year at much higher rates and the companies don't have the money. Moody's just put out this entire talk about it. And in that talk, they literally tell you how bad it is. Like in one sentence, literally the speaker or the head of analytics for Moody's is literally telling you how dire this situation is. And that is why it's so important for you to be ready. And being ready is what I want you guys to do. So it's time to get out of debt. It's time to get prepared in your mind. And, and people don't realize that. I talk about this in the real estate crash course. I'll put a link below 70% off of the course. But to get ready for this, it's not just having money ready. It's having a mindset and understanding the signs and why you would buy at this time period instead of this time period and what happens in the news and all those things that affect you. This is so much worse than what I went through in 2005, 2006, while I was liquidating all of my real estate properties, telling everyone that there was a crash coming in real estate, nailed it, but it still took two years and you still have time, but not that much time left. And remember, you only are going to be as successful as the amount of time you have to get ready for this event. And you want to be ready for it. It is insane. But enough of that, let's dive into this story. And uh, it's entitled CRE, which stands for commercial real estate, CLO issuance is down, limiting multifamily finance options. It says, at a time when the industry is worried about changes in traditional bank CRE lending, other forms, of financing understandably get extra attention. One is CRE, Collateralized Loan Obligations, or CLOs, whose issuance, according to TREP, has outpaced the conduit CMBS, or Commercial Mortgage uh, Backed Securities Market, in 2021 and 2022. So it sounds funny. There's, there's some differences between these two, but remember, think about them in very, very similar markets, okay? CMBS and CLOs says making them popular are a flexible structure, relative basis attractiveness, higher relative yield, and floating rate structure, says the firm. Now, now think about what I just read. Floating rate and flexible structure, okay? Now, in, back in 2006, we had, in 2005, we had what was called negative amortization loans, and a lot of them called were being dubbed ninja loans, not because of the economic ninja. Um, uh, it was because it was so easy to get them, because the market for so long with real estate had been going up, up, and up, and it was so easy for, I mean, literally, it got so nutty when I was doing a lot of mortgages, right? I was, I was pulling about two mortgages a month, um, in mine, and that was a big operation for me because I didn't have any mentors that were bigger than me. You know, I was the biggest home flipper I knew. I wish I would have known people bigger. I could have learned a lot more and not gone through the problems that I went through. But by and all, or by and large, I was able to still see those trends and get out before the market crashed, right? Well, it was so easy and so nutty. And people, appraisers, were just literally doing drive-bys. They were just driving by the property like, yeah, it looks like it's not on fire. Cool, it's worth this much. Because it was like every month, the house would just go up and go up and go. It was just absolutely insane, right? Because of the buying frenzy. But that buying frenzy really did end in mid-2005 when we started to see some problems. Well, uh, and, and really, it started dropping in 2004 as the rates started going up. The Federal Reserve started raising rates. Hint, hint, see what's going on. But um, you know, by 2005, we had some issues. And... What happened is banks were starved for money because that's how they made a lot of their money was making mortgages. So they came out with all these loans that were real flexible rates and, uh, you know, hey, you could do these uh, negative amortizations. So if you can't make all your payment, we'll give you like three or four op payment options. If you can't pay it, we'll just take the difference you owe us and tack it on to the back end. Just a nightmare, right? I mean, uh, from a, a debt restructuring kind of way, you're just like, this is the worst thing anyone could get into. But people did it, and the sheep just ran into it. Well, we've been seeing that with the CLO market, and that is showing you how dire it is for banks to be able to try and get out there and lend this money. But now you have this problem with massive bank failures, okay? So banks are getting a lot more cautious. They're going to these uh these uh, speaking events like what Moody's just put on, and I'm, I'm going to put a link to that story below on my other real estate channel. It's like an emergency channel. So if you haven't subscribed, please go check out the video and hit the subscribe button just in case something happens to this one. 
But um, they're watching these experts speak about how dire the situation is. So they're pulling back on how much they're going to lend and who they're going to lend to and at what rates and what fees, okay? So it says here, CRE CLOs offer higher yields because of greater risks, lower debt service coverage ratios and higher loan to value ratios, meaning more leverage and less room for problems in net cash flow. Now, again, the consumer is getting strapped, right? They're having a hard time paying their bills. It's only a certain amount of time before they start not paying rents. And that is going to be a problem, especially as people are getting laid off more and more since January. And that number, like I say, I've said it before, I'll say it again, by fall is going to ex just explode. It says here, the increased uncertainty and risk are why CRE, CLO managers favor multifamily with typically low delinquency rates and steady lease rollovers. <laughs> Just wait, it's going to change. Creating more dependable rents and overall a safer profile. Again, none of this is safe when your tenants lose their job and they can't find another job. So it's not like they're gonna turn around and move out of their house and do the honorable thing and say, sorry, we can't pay. Just wait. You know what? I'll tell you what, in the last three years, remember when the government said, you don't have to pay? How many people said, I ain't paying? And a lot of landlords uh, were literally out in the street trying to make ends meet to keep that property going. And it happened to a lot of people. Put it down in the comment section if, it, if you were affected or if you stopped paying rent. You said, hey, the government said I don't have to and I didn't. And how did that work out at the end? I want to know. I want to hear these stories so I can share them. It says right here, of 54.7 billion in outstanding multifamily CRE CLOs, 85% comes due within the next two years. At that point, lenders and borrowers have to agree on one of three actions, either extend the loan, refinance into a new loan, or pay the balance, which you know most people are not going to do that and cannot do that. So if payments, payment is the option and the borrower doesn't have or is unwilling to provide the necessary capital, then either both parties modify the loan or there's a default. So let me explain here and I'll, I'll, I'll show you this, why it's such a big deal. The reason why uh, none of those options are gonna work is because the banks are going to go, okay, it's time to refi in this higher rate. The borrower's gonna go, I don't have the money and I don't have the cash flow. I don't have the money to pay off the loan. I don't have the cash flow to be able to pay that much higher rate. It'll, it'll put me under. And they say, well, we want you to do it. So we're going to put you in. You, you're going to do it. There's no choice. Because the banks are looking at, look, we could take that money that we get uh, either from the payoff of the house or we repossess it and we sell it on the market. We take that money and then we loan it out at much, much, much higher rates. This is in turn going to also force the property asset values to drop because people aren't going to be able to sell these properties to buyers coming in with the current cash flow that's, that it's making based on the new rates that are much higher. And this, this rate explosion, we've never seen anything like this. It hasn't even done this since right before Paul Volcker spiked rates. This is absolute insanity. This is unprecedented. This is uncharted waters. That's why you know it's the greatest opportunity in your life. When things happen like that and you don't see, you see news saying, this hasn't happened in 20 years. This hasn't happened in 30 years. We haven't seen numbers like this in 40 years. That means get ready. The most amazing opportunity is coming for you. Guys, I'm gonna put a link to that course, the Real Estate Crash Course. Start preparing yourself, your finances, your mindset and who you're hanging around with and who you're listening to right now. And that's what that course covers because it is so vital. I can guarantee you this, for the course, I think at 70% off, it's like 299 bucks. You're gonna save so much more than that, taking that course and getting into the right mindset now. Even if you're not buying cash flowing properties, but you're just buying a property for yourself, you have to know when to buy and when to sell. All right, guys, that being said, the Economic Ninja is out.